हेलो एंड वेलकम एवरीवन टू द पॉलिटी प्राइमर सीरीज ऑफ जिस टी आई एस माई नेम इज प्रज्ञा एंड टूडे वील बी डिस्कसिंग अ टॉपिक इन विच मोस्ट ऑफ दी स्टूडेंट गेट्स कन्फ्यूज द टाइटल ऑफ आर टूडे डिस्कशन इज ड्यू प्रोसेस ऑफ लॉ वर्सेज प्रोसीजर स्टैब्लिश बाई लॉ इन दिस डिस्कशन वील बी सींग द बैकग्राउंड ऑफ द टॉपिक देन वील ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड द ड्यू प्रोसेस ऑफ लॉ वील ऑल्सो सी द प्रोसीजर स्टैब्लिश बाई लॉ वील ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड इट्स हिस्टोरिकल कंटेक्ट we'll see how both of these doctrines have evolved in india we'll also see a comparison between both of these doctrines and in the end we are going to see a practice question for your prelims examination and a practice question for your mains examination now let us proceed to understand the background of our today's discussion so when we got independence india got independence our supreme court was comparatively new new and the supreme court took the help of both of these doctrines that is the doctrine of due process of law and procedure established by law and it also referred to the interpretation given by the us supreme court and the english courts to understand and interpret the fundamental rights so both of these doctrines have shaped up the interpretation of the fundamental rights they help in protecting the fundamental rights of a, a citizen and they also help in interpreting the fundamental rights of the citizens which are guaranteed in part 3 of our indian constitution so both of these doctrines were used to shape the landscape of the interpretation of fundamental rights in india now let us understand what is due process of law so the fifth cons uh, constitution amendment to the us constitution lays down that no person shall be deprived of his life liberty or property without due process of law this term is very important due process of law so this term due in the due process of law means that the law cannot be unreasonable arbitrary it should be just fair and reasonable so the doctrine due process of law states that whenever there is a procedure that has to be followed to deprive a person of his life property or liberty it cannot be unreasonable or arbitrary therefore the courts can pronounce whether a law affecting a person life uh, property or liberty is reasonable or not so basically this is known as the test of reasonableness test of reasonableness so and the due process of law could be further divided into substantive due process and procedural due process in substantive due process we will see whether the process that has been followed is reasonable or not so in procedural due process of law we will see that whether the procedure that has been adopted to deprive a person of his life liberty or property is reasonable fair and just or not and whether the person whose life liberty and property has been affected is given a fair chance of right to hearing or not and this includes four things firstly the tribunal in which by which the case is heard it should be non biased it should be neutral then he have, must have a reasonable opportunity of being heard then he is also entitled to receive a notice that such and such thing has happened and we are arresting you and we are arresting you in, in this procedure if at all there is an arrest of the person then he is entitled to get a notice of his arrest then the process procedure must be orderly procedure that means it should not be arbitrary in nature so due uh, in the doctrine of due process of law examines both the substantive and the procedural aspects of the law and the courts in this case act as an arbiter of both the substantive procedure of law as well as the procedural aspect of the law so if we try to summarize the doctrine of due process of law it can be summarized that that firstly the court will have an assessment of law the court will assess whether the law is just fair or reasonable then there will be nullification of unreasonable laws the court is empowered to declare a law which is not just fair and arbitrary which is unreasonable in nature to be void in nature so, so the court in this case is empowered to declare it as void 
then there will be protection of it, individual rights and fair treatment. The court will also uh, see that the individual rights and freedoms are protected and if they are violated then the procedure that violates them should be they should not be arbitrary. So, this was all about the doctrine of due process of law. Now, let us proceed to understand the term procedure established by law. So, the procedure established by law is a very important doctrine under the Indian constitution. Article 21 of our Indian constitution states that no person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty apart from the procedure established by law. So, what do we mean by this? We mean that Article 21 also is not absolute. The parliament can deprive you of your life and personal liberty, but the procedure established by law should be followed. And the procedure must satisfy certain requisites in the sense of being fair and reasonable. And the procedure in this case also cannot be arbitrary, unfair or unreasonable. So, the court follows three tests in the case to establish whether the uh, personal liberty or right to life has been deprived by just fair and reasonable means or not. So, the court firstly will examine that whether there is a law. Then the court will examine whether there is a, a valid law. The, there should not be a, only a law, it should be a valid law. For example, there is this UAPA, Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. So, if a person's life and personal liberty has been deprived under this law, so the court will firstly analyze that whether this law is a valid law or not. Then the court will see whether the procedure by which the person's life and personal liberty has been deprived is just, fair or reasonable. So, the procedure established by law must also be reasonable and it should be strictly followed. If it is strictly followed, the court will then declare that okay the person's life and liberty has been deprived by a procedure established by law hence uh, we cannot also do anything so that is why the procedure established by law is very important and it has been mentioned under article 21 of our indian constitution now let us see the historical context of both of these doctrines so the doctrine of due process of law finds its place in clause 39 of the magna carta in england but once the England English jurisprudence started evolving, it did not follow the due process of law and it found its place in the US Constitution. As I was discussing before also that the Fifth Amendment to the US Constitution lays down the due process of law. Then if we talk about the procedure established by law, the procedure must be fair and reasonable. So, the procedure established by law is also an English doctrine. And it is followed extensively in the Indian constitution and we have explicitly mentioned it in the Indian constitution. In India, the, originally the doctrine of uh, procedure established by law was followed. So, I am discussing this only that we have mentioned that procedure established by law is explicitly mentioned in the Indian constitution. But after the case of Manika Gandhi versus Union of India case, there has been a shift towards due process of law doctrine. We will be discussing this in our further slides when we will see that how both of these doctrines evolved in India. Then the judiciary emphasized that the procedure established by law must be fair, just and reasonable and not arbitrary or oppressive. So, what happens is when uh, there is a due process of law, the court can run behind the intention of the parliament to make a law. But this does not happen in the case of procedure established by law. So, due process of law has a wider scope than the procedure established by law. In due process of law, the court can run behind the intention of the parliament to declare that whether the law is a valid law, whether the law is a just law. But the same cannot happen in the case of procedure established by law. In this case, the court only will see that the, whether the procedure has been strictly followed or not. So, Kindly remember this point, this is a major difference between the doctrine of due process of law and procedure established by law. That in due process of law, both the intention of the uh, parliament is seen, of the executive is seen. But in the procedure established by law, only the intention of the executive is seen. Only the, that is seen that the procedure is strictly followed. 
So this constitutes a major difference between both of these doctrines. Now let us see how both of these doctrines have evolved, evolved in India. So the first case in this regard is A.K. Gopalan. This is one of the important case in which the Supreme Court followed the procedure established by law. So what happened in this case? A person was detained under the Preventive Detention Act of 1950. And he filed a writ petition in the High Court stating that I have been denied by Article 21 without a procedure established by law without following the due process of law. So, I, this is very arbitrary in nature and just because and my detention should not be uh, there and I should be acquitted, I should be freed under Article 21 of the Indian Constitution. So, this was the whole argument in this case. But the Supreme Court in this case uh, gave a very narrow interpretation to Article 21 and held that if the Procedure established by law, which is mentioned under our Indian Constitution, is strictly followed, then the person can be deprived of his right to life and personal liberty. So, this was a very narrow interpretation which was given to Article 21 in this case. And in this case, the court also said that there is a distinction between procedure established by law and due process of law. So, and this case is also famous for the descent of very famous descent of Justice Fazal Ali. Justice Fazal Ali, he dissented and said that Article 21 cannot be violated without following a reasonable procedure, without following a just procedure. So, he was the first judge who acknowledged that the procedure must be just, the procedure must be fair and the person whose personal liberty or right to life is getting deprived, he should have an opportunity of being heard, he should have a right to being heard, he should have a fair trial. So, all of these was recognized by Justice Fazal Ali in this case. Then came the case of Satwan Singh Sahani versus D. Rama Ratnam. So, in this case, what happened was the Supreme Court shifted its approach from strict procedure established by law and interpreted that Article 21 cannot be violated and Article 21 has to be followed with Article 14. So, the Supreme Court in this case established a relation between Article 21 and Article 14. And in this case, the Supreme Court established that, held that the procedure must be a reasonable procedure. The procedure must be a just procedure. You cannot just violate Article 21 stating that the, okay, the procedure was strictly followed. That is why the personal liberty and right to life have been violated. No, it has to be examined even on the touchstone of Article 14. So, this case is very important in this regard. Then came the case of R.C. Cooper versus Union of India. So, in more or less same thing was uh, uh, held in this case also by the Supreme Court that the procedures uh, established by law must be reasonable uh, and this case established the fair uh, and the test of reasonability of the procedure of established by law. Then came the landmark case of Maneka Gandhi versus Union of India which completely changed the landscape of interpretation of Article 21 in India. This case gave a very wide interpretation to Article 21. The court in this case specifically held the relationship between Article 21 and Article 14 and Article 19 of our Indian Constitution. This case, this uh, interrelationship between these three articles is also known as the Golden Triangle. And the court in this case held that if any Article 21 is violated by any procedure and if it is contrary to Article 14 and Article 19, then that procedure cannot be followed. So, for the procedure to be a just and a fair procedure, it has to be examined not only on the touchstone of Article 21, but also on the touchstone of Article 14 and 19. So, this was a major landmark case law which changed the interpretation of Article 21 of our Indian Constitution. After this, we have starting the interpreting Article 21 of our Indian Constitution in very broad terms and most of our uh, rights are included under Article 21 wide interpretation. So, 
Article 14 not only grants us equality, it also strikes at the heart of arbitrariness. So, no law can be arbitrary, no law can be unreasonable and oppressive and if that, they, that law is so, it will be declared null and void by our Supreme Court. So, this was the evolution of these both doctrines in India. Now, let us compare both of these doctrines because it can be asked in your examinations. So, first point of difference is origin. The due process of law, as I was discussing, has originated from the US Constitution and the doctrine of procedure established law by law has been originated from the British Constitution. Then, what, are, what is the role of both of these doctrines? So, the role of due process of law is to determine where the law is just, fair, reasonable or not. And in this due process of law, the courts can run behind the intention of the parliament in making a law. So, what is the role of procedure established by law? It is to determine whether the law made by the legislature is made as per the procedure established by law or not. So, in this case, as I was discussing before also, the court will only analyze three tests, whether there is a law, whether there is a, a valid law and whether the procedure which is followed is strictly followed or not. So, this is the role of procedure established by law. Then, the scope of both of these doctrines. As I was discussing before that the due process of law doctrine has a much wider scope than the procedure established by law. Procedure established by law is narrower in scope. Then, protection. Both the legislature and the executive. This, this I was explaining to you that in the case of due process of law, the court can run behind the intention of both legislature and the executive behind enacting a law and enforcement of a law. But in the case of procedure established by law, we will only see the intention of the executive. Let me explain this by an example that, for example, a pol the police comes to arrest me and it says that you have violated a law and now we are trying to arrest you. So, in my case, the court will only see that which law I have violated, whether it was a law at that time or not. Then the court will see that whether the law which I have violated is a valid law or not. And the procedure which is being followed by the police is strictly followed or not. If all of these three conditions are followed, the police is entitled to arrest me. But supposedly there is a due process of law. The court will see that whether there is the parliament's intention behind enacting that law is fair or not, whether the law is just and fair or not and then the court will decide that whether there was a violation of my article 21 or not. So, this is the difference between the doctrine of due process of law and procedure established by law. With this, we come to our conclusion of our today's discussion. We have seen what is due process of law. We have also seen what is established procedure established by law. We have seen that the doctrine of due process of law is taken from the US Constitution and we have not mentioned explicitly in our Indian Constitution. On the other hand, the doctrine of procedure established by law is explicitly mentioned in our Indian Constitution under Article 21. We have also compared both of these doctrines and we have also seen how both of these doctrines have evolved in India. Now, let us see a practice question for your prelims examination. So, this question was asked in a prelims examination in as recent as 2023. And the question states that in essence, what does due process of law means? Your first option is the principle of natural justice. Your second option is the procedure established by law. Then C, fair application of law and option D, equality before law. Kindly answer, put your answer in the comments box below. Now let us see. A practice question for you, men's examination. So, in India, the trend is shifting from procedure established by law to due process of law. Comment. So, let us discuss the approach of writing this answer in your men's examination. So, in introduction, you will write about both of these doctrines that the doctrine of due process of law, due process of law, and also you will write about the procedure established by law. You will uh, state about the origin of both of these doctrines and then in the body, you will explain the meaning of both of these doctrines. 
how the courts have uh, evolved both of these doctrines. You will discuss the legislative history from A.K. Gopalan to Maneka Gandhi as I have discussed in my lecture today. Then you will conclude that yes, the courts are shifting from procedure established by law to due process of law. Because the procedure established by law has a narrower scope and the due process doctrine has a wider scope. The law must not only be just fair and reasonable, it should not be arbitrary in nature. So, you will conclude stating that now the Indian courts are shifting towards the doctrine of due process of law to analyze whether the procedure that is being followed to violate our fundamental rights is uh, reasonable and non-arbitrary. The procedure cannot be oppressive and uh, arbitrary in nature. So, you will conclude your answer by stating all of these points. So, this was the approach but you can follow for writing your men's answer question. You will also say state that how the doctrine of due process of law has gained importance in the recent Supreme Court judgments. You can quote some latest uh, case laws under article 21. Then you will also state that every law in India is now examined on the touchstone of fairness and then you can conclude your answer that yes, we are following the due process of law doctrine this time because it has a wider scope and, and the doctrine is invoked to ensure a more just procedure under the law and to protect the fundamental rights in a that are guaranteed to us by our Indian constitution in part 3. I hope this session was insightful for you. If you like the today's discussion, kindly like the video and subscribe to our channel for more such updates. Thank you.